Hello, I'm Ultimate Reviews, and October has come around once again, which means it's spooky season. And I wanted to talk about a classic monster again. Whereas the last time it was zombies with Paranorman, this time it's vampires, which are by far a more interesting monster to me. I don't know why, as much as I love Paranorman and the Resident Evil franchise and some others, in general, I don't find zombies as a main threat particularly interesting. I'm not like completely averse to them or anything, it's just they don't pique my interest as much as vampires. I always get excited when the fanged fucks show up in horror stories. They seem to have a lot more potential narrative-wise than zombies because they have intelligence, they have personality, they have agency, but they also have the capacity to be consumed by their animalistic hunger for blood and become mindless monsters. They basically manage to have their cake and eat it too. This works really well as a terrifying threat, of course, but when it's done right, it can also work really well dramatically. With vampires as the leads or secondary force that isn't fully malevolent, but very much could be. Which can be really effective tension building, again, if it's done right. Now, one avenue that seems to know this especially well is anime, with countless anime using vampires in various positions in the story, ranging from the main leads to full-on villains. One of these anime series, and one of my personal favourite horror animes in general, is the, in my opinion, underrated Trinity Blood. Based on the series of light novels of the same name by Seno Yoshida, the 24-episode anime series Trinity Blood first aired in 2005, and was produced by the studio Gonzo. I was enamoured by its intriguing dark fantasy story, intense action, and the intensely morbid but emotionally enthralling concept. But does it hold up to scrutiny? Well, let's find out with this review of Trinity Blood. Spoilers in advance. Trinity Blood has one of my favourite concepts of any anime series ever. Taking place 900 years after an apocalyptic war, humans or Terrans are in a state of ever-growing tensions with vampires or Methuselahs. The series follows Father Abel Knight Road, who is a member of the Axe Organisation, a group of spe specially trained nuns and priests with various skills working on behalf of the Vatican, who attempt to keep the peace between the two factions. The Vatican being kind of the neutral mediators of the new human government and the Methuselah's new human empire, effectively causing all three bodies to be in a state of cold war with one another. Abel Nightroad himself seems like your average guy on the surface, but he's secretly one of the most powerful members of Axe, being a Krusnik, the next step in evolution that's effectively a super Methuselah that feeds on normal Methuselahs, kind of a vampire's vampire if you will. Like I said, the idea is my favourite concept of any anime I've ever watched, on paper at least. But an idea is just that. Whether it's good or not comes down to almost entirely the execution. So, is it executed well? Well, to start with, the word it creates is exactly what I would have hoped for. Seeing as it's set in the future, there's a good portion of advanced fictional technology, which as an avid sci-fi fan I really enjoy, but because of the war, it's also stunted things like architecture, which makes it look partially like a period drama set in the Renaissance. I love the world it, that it's created. The combination of a sci-fi setting and a historical-looking Roman setting makes for a really unique environment and an excellent setting for this particular conflict to take place. As on top of being an interesting setting in general, it also makes the action sequences all the more engaging. There's a lot of good variety in settings, as even though most of it takes place in the Vatican City, the fact that the characters travel for missions means we get to see a good variety of locations and get a good feel for the world. It's very well developed. Not to mention that the world is drenched in a beautifully gothic aesthetic, which is always a plus in my opinion. The internal politics of the three factions is surprisingly engrossing, with each of the main three sides having various individuals or teams of specialists working with or against each other for different goals that amount to trying to consolidate power or just change the playing field for whatever reason. It effectively turns into a multi-person game of chess, with Abel and the other Axe members grounding it as the audience perspective characters. The series is chock full of suspense, as more and more twists and turns reveal themselves, with battles, murders, powerful figures, assassination attempts, betrayals, manipulations, personal vendettas, and one mind-blowing reveal after another. It's just so absorbing, each episode leaves you on the edge of your seat. Unfortunately, 
Unfortunately, this is about where my compliments with the story end. The problem with the execution is that it goes on off on several tangents that don't get enough development to actually matter in the long run, or end up getting dropped almost entirely, save for the occasional callback. These could have been really interesting, and many of them are briefly, but they just have so little impact on the story, they end up being pointless as a hydrophobic fish monster. It also has an incredibly rushed conclusion, trying to tie up every plot point at the last minute, which just further emphasises the wonky structure the whole thing seems to have. Instead of getting every loose thread and uh, giving them time and tying it up nicely, it just shoves everything into a Gordian plot and barely s saves enough time for the big conflict to properly wrap up. With the premise, it could have been great, but instead feels like it carries a lot of wasted potential with it. It's really engaging, but unfortunately a bit disappointing. So the story is a mixed bag. The characters are equally a mixed bag, but it's understandable as there are so many of them. A large cast is quite a common thing in anime. In any case, I'll focus on the ones I care about the most in a bit more detail, and then just give a quick overview of the others. I should probably start with Abel as he's basically the main character. Abel is a decent protagonist, he's pretty likeable as he tries to hold everything together with peace, using as much diplomacy and negotiation as possible, as well as putting benevolence first. He does this partially for the sake of maintaining his vow to his lost love not to kill, and partially because it's his nature. But he ends up being pushed to the brink as he tries desperately to hold back and not let the darkness of his crucifix side consume him. Ah, see, that rant about the ethical, centric, logistic possibilities of vampires in fiction was actually going somewhere, kind of. Abel is fine. He's kind-hearted and likeable, usually serving as the voice of reason and the moral centre for the more violent and unhinged characters. He gets plenty of one-on-one -on -one interactions that show how sweet and peaceful he can be. But then he has that darker side that shows up to do badass things that are fun to watch. The Blood Scythe is the obvious example, it's like something out of Dead Man Wonderland, but even cooler. But my problem with him is that he's probably one of the least interesting characters. The side characters are way more interesting, and I want to find out more about them than I do the main guy who gets the most focus. That's also kind of a common thing in anime, weird. Anyway, moving on to some of the other characters, Esther Blanchett has an excellent backstory and motivation that makes her seem interesting, only for her to be fairly irrelevant most of the time. She serves very little to the plot and doesn't really do anything useful beyond the first episode uh, she appears in. She's just kind of the bland shadow for Abel, that's about it. Kind of the same problem as Abel in that she's not as interesting as the side characters. Speaking of interesting side characters, Trez Ikus, aka Gunslinger, is a cyborg, being mostly a machine with the exception of his organic brain. This makes him fairly durable and an expert marksman. Gunslinger is my favourite character. He's not completely unfeeling, but he's more logic-driven and will do almost anything to get his target efficiently, without thinking twice about the moral implications. Which means that Abel usually has to keep him from crossing the line whenever he tries to curb stomp a pensioner to get to the nearest vampire. He also has several uh, cyborg idiosyncrasies, like his robotic speech pattern, where he asks for a damage report instead of asking if someone's okay, or he'll answer, he'll say answer required when he asks a question, which you may expect to get old, but I like it as it sets his dialogue apart from the other characters and makes him more distinctive. His ruthlessness combined with his marksmanship makes his action scenes really badass with bullets constantly flying and everything. It's very fun to watch. My favourite character is the emotionally stunted robot, go figure. Lady Catherine is the kind of Nick Fury of the whole operation, being the founder of Axe and the one who deploys the members of Axe to keep the peace at great risk to herself, as collaborating with the new human empire is against the rules, because the rest of the Vatican doesn't believe that coexistence with vampires is possible, and if her operation was discovered, it would result in her execution. She's decent as a leader character, keeping everyone in check and making sure the very divergent personalities of the other Axe members are still able to work together. She's usually at odds with Duke Francesco de Medici, as they both advise the Pope, and their back and forth is quite entertaining. There's a bunch more characters, so I'm going to go quickfire for the rest of the characters that I want to talk about. There's Leon Garcia de Asteris, codenamed Dandelion, 
who's in prison for a thousand years for murder, and he gets a sentence reduced whenever he helps Axe. He's tough and macho on the outside, but he has a softer, more caring side that makes him likeable. Their sister Kate, codenamed Iron Maiden, whose real body is in a coma and projects her consciousness through a hologram. How do they do that? Fuck knows, but it's an interesting idea for a character nonetheless. Probably one of the most developed out of the side characters is Sister Noella Bohr, codenamed Mistress, a witch with the power to see people's emotions visually, as well as track them using it. She funnily enough serves as the emotional centre of the group, comforting people uh, where she can. I just wish we had seen her use her abilities more and in a more creative and clever ways. William Walter Wordsworth, codenamed The Professor, is the creator of Gunslinger and treats his creations as his children. He's obviously very intelligent and seems very nonchalant, but also caring and friendly, with a darker, more serious side that he can display when necessary. His inventions are cool as hell, and as far as other characters of his type go, he's pretty good. Astaroshi uh, Asaran is a vampire in the New Human Empire and the Duchess of Odessa. She starts out hating humans, can relate, humans are the worst, but after reluctantly working with Abel and more interactions with humans in general, her opinion changes by the end. I despised her uh, to start with as I hated her obnoxious and bitchy attitude, but she starts to grow on me by the end. She has a decent arc, even if it's not as developed as some of the other characters that appear before she does. There are other characters, but I could be here till next Halloween. The voice acting of all the characters is brilliant, both in the sub and the dub. The performances are really what help sell the characters. Trinity Blood is an interesting series. It's not without its flaws with the kind of disjointed story, rushed conclusion, and some characters and ideas not getting the focus they deserve. But it's got a lot going for it. The concept is one of my favourites for an anime with a lot of possibilities, and most of them get explored. The characters are all still interesting and have really good dynamics with each other, and their interactions are always entertaining. And even th with the plot being all over the place, I can never say I was bored at all. It holds your attention really well throughout. That's not even mentioning the animation, which, even by anime standards, is amazing, and the gothic sci-fi look really adds to that. I think the best thing about this show is the horror and how atmospheric it is. Good atmosphere always draws me into something, and this show has it in spades, while balancing that with some intense badass action. Would it be better with a bit more focus with its plot and more, a more satisfying ending? Yeah, but that doesn't make it bad. In fact, like I said at the beginning, it's one of my favourite horror-related anime series, and I would still consider it underrated. I would recommend it if you're a fan of vampires or horror and sci-fi in general. And it's perfect for the spooky time of year. And hopefully more spooky stuff is on the way very soon. See you in the next video. Rest in peace out. <laughs> You made that joke before. Get out of my video. <laughs> ah. Don't sing if you want to live long. They have no use for your song. You're dead, you're dead, you're dead. You're dead and out of this world. You'll never get a second chance Plan all your moves in advance Stay dead, stay dead, stay dead Stay dead and out of this world